Hello, my friends, and welcome back. We have a little problem here. Not we, but uh, the European Union has a little problem. A problem that um, they should have uh, figured out when they started uh, to embark uh, themselves in the sanctions and now embargo um, move against Russia. That would have uh, that could have been foreseen, and uh, I don't think they or if they uh, um, plan for it, um, they do not or did not expect maybe to get this far. They didn't expect that the Russians would be able to, uh, you know, um, hold the lines um, against these sanctions imposed on their economy and their oil and natural gas exports. So uh, now is a problem with the supply of uh, fossil fuels that the European Union basically imposed on itself. Russian found other markets in Asia and in other places uh, on this planet, so maybe it's going to have a little dent as uh, JP Morgan Bank uh, assessed. Now, after two months and a half of war, uh, after they said that uh, Russia, Russian ruble will collapse in uh, uh, 48 hours, the Russian economy is going to go down and going to be dead. Well, they're not. It seems like on the other hand, in Europe, in the United States, inflation is skyrocketing. Uh, um, the price at the pump uh, is getting higher and higher, um, and the price for uh, groceries increases daily here. Uh, shortages uh, are underway, I'm assuming, including grain, since the wheat is Ukraine and uh, Russia's uh, one of the big exporters of wheat as well as sunflower oil and other kind of uh, oil, vegeta vegetable oils. So then again, uh, we have a little disrupt, little big disruption, I would say. So uh, as you know, uh, Uni United Nations, United Nations, uh, United States and European Union imposed sanctions on Russia. And now European Union now, they were talking about uh, placing an embargo on uh, Russian oil. Now we have a lot of countries in Europe who depend on uh, Russian oil greatly or some of them 100%. And then uh, they wanted to uh, vote in the European Union to impose an embargo on Russian oil. The problem is these countries like Hungary said, we will veto this according to the rules of and procedures and protocols of the European Union. We'll veto this, uh, uh, these sanctions because it's against uh, our country's interests our people's interest, which I think it's it's uh, legitimate because that's your first uh, concern and the duty that you are sworn in as a, a leader of a country, a democratic country, is uh, towards your people. And in this case, you don't want your people to be having a uh, diminished lifestyle and uh, live on a standard of living because of what happened between other two countries that you really don't care about. Nevertheless, uh, we have, so uh, Hungary showed its, you know, what, and said, we're, we're going to veto. Then we got Bulgaria, Czech Republic and Slovakia saying, oh, if uh, something's going to happen, we want some conce concessions too, because the uh, same thing as Hungary, we're, we're with Hungary. So it's a big problem here. Now, we have an article here from the Telegraph. Yeah, that's Telegraph. And this is from um, May 13th, 2022. And this is the title, Mountain Tensions Could See EU Shelve Russian Oil Embargo. That means the tensions within uh, the European Union would most likely have the European Union drop the Russian oil embargo. Um, so Brussels could shelve its plans for an embargo on Russian oil, Russia oil imports amid mounting tensions over the bloc's attempts to roll out a sixth package of economic sanctions against Moscow. Sixth, Hungary has uh, refused to back further measures against Russia's energy sector, which has uh, prevented the bloc from targeting more oligarch and banks and ramp, ramp up pressure on the Kremlin over its invasion of Ukraine. Well, they were talking about uh, exactly, not about the oligarchs. No, we need uh, fossil fuel for our uh, country. That's what we need. Diplomatic sources told the Telegraph that the European Commission is considering carving out 
the proposed ban on Russian oil in order to overcome the opposition from Budapest. Yes, that's a free country with big balls for the wider package of sanctions. Good, Orban, good. Your people come before Ursula and uh, other... Uh, anyway. But hawkish members stated that... Uh, stated... Hawkish member states have now warned they will veto the package if Eurocrats offer to water down the sanctions further. Okay, so it's a fight within the bloc, the alliance, the European community. We will not agree to further weaken sanctions or to make unjustifiably payments for sanctions blockers. When they talk, they, an N EU ambassador said, okay, so let's have your population be starving or not having electricity or have a, uh, you know, your economy go down and industries at your country and let us be ourselves and see who's gonna and you can put a medal of virtue on your chest we are okay with that but let us live our lives and you can your uh, population's uh, uh, lives how much you want but well, that's how it's in a democracy you vote for some people to make decisions for you like this no uh, referendum that's what should be done in each and every country when they have such important decisions to make. Not this guy's elected one, weasels, you know, they talk to one another in dark, smoky rooms. Not like that. Um, yeah, and that, that EU ambassador, I wonder who that was. So we, and I'm quoting, we are under political and moral, moral pressure that we put on ourselves, right? To impose sanctions against Russia, as this is the only way to effectively stop Putin's war machine. Yeah, okay, well, that's what they say. This is the only way. We are dumb enough not to think of any other way. No, this is the only way. And for that, you, 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 you have to suffer because they say so. Right? For whom? For whom? For other people that have a problem with other people. Right? And then all this is made to sound like if that happens, you know, the, remember the... Uh, domino effect that they uh, made the Americans and uh, the Western Americans mostly say, yes, we're going to go and we're going to fight for Vietnam. We're going to take care because if the Vietnam turns communist, all Asia will turn communist. But if you look back a few years before, China, one billion people turned communist and we were concerned about Vietnam falling down. You know, the domino effect is gone. They try to say, oh, if Ukraine falls, the Russians will not stop to Ukraine. We know that because they bring the crystal ball and we look in it. Yes, yes, that's what it says. Let's go. Really? Yeah, we're treated like that. Remember, my assessment, and I think all these things could have been minimized or prevented if the Minsk agreements would have been followed, implemented by Ukraine. With its sponsors, we were the Western countries, remember? For what? For seven years? Eight years? I'm not saying Russia is, uh, you know, the best country. Neither is anybody else. No, nevertheless, uh, they have problems. And uh, uh, I don't know what's going to happen in those countries when their uh, standard of living is going to go down, down, down. And their children will have a hard, hard life. And their children, because of the uh, loans they get to uh, give aid to Ukraine. Good job. Shoot yourself in the foot. I, you know, I foresee that there's going to be a little change here in the European Union and they can't force these guys unless, I don't know, Orban goes uh, to see uh, Jesus or something. He's just uh, not at the church, you know what I mean? So he's, he's helped to uh, uh, um, go and have a uh, early meeting with... Uh... Thank you very much for being with me again today. Stay strong, stay smart. Look for the truth. And be just. See ya.